Hey, what's up guys? I'm Aaliyah. Welcome to Different Churches YouTube campus. While you're here, go ahead and subscribe and put on the post notifications and go ahead and follow our other socials on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're feeling generous, go to dfrnt.church and press the generosity button. And I hope wherever you are that God speaks to you and you come back next week. OMW. It's too much money, so I left. No one was subbing with me, so I left. My girl caught me peeking. It's tough being a fan. Switch up the point of view. The costs are too high. Nobody is on our side. And situations get shady. So it's tough being a follower. Different church, welcome! If you're a part of the YouTube campus, one, I just, man, wherever you're watching from, your dorm room, the weight room, maybe it's just your house, maybe it's your bedroom, the bathroom, wherever, welcome! How are you? And if you're a part of the 615 campus, man, thank you so much for serving, for being a part. And I can't say it, I can't, I can't. Happy Valentine's Day! I hope there are two types of people. Listen, there are two types of people right now. If you're married, in a relationship, engaged, dating, boyfriend, girlfriend, enjoy it. There are some things in your life where, here's what I'll tell you, if you're a husband, a wife, fiance, whatever, whatever your spouse is, significant other's love language is that isn't yours, why don't you today, why don't you move yours over to that and, and give the massage? Why don't you go and spend quality time? Why don't you write a note? Why don't you do that? Why don't you step out? Because everything needs a spark. That, that's why we have holidays. That's why you have vacations. That's why you do these things to reignite. And there's no, your marriage, your, that's the most important ministry. But if you're single, congratulations. The Bible says, and, 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 Media, culture, the church has done a really bad job of portraying being single. That's the goal. The goal is that it says that I, you should want to be single so that you can spend your time serving God. And so here's what I would ask you, man. Don't, don't be depressed this year. Don't feel like you're not good enough this year. God's using you. Be used the season. Don't allow, don't, don't get in your head. Don't put on Drake tonight and just kind of get alone. No, no, no. God's doing something. I promise. Congrats. God wants to do something huge in your life. And I remember growing up, Valentine's Day, you would do, and maybe if you remember or not, you put these like little shoe boxes at the, like the back of the room and all the kids, even Salem this, uh, this past week, she went and got Valentine's for a class. One says David, one says Brittany, all this stuff. And you'd put at the beginning of the day, everyone would go and drop the Valentine's in. And I remember I was, I wanted like one like personal one. And there's always someone I had in mind, right? Like I, I wanted, like you get the ones from everybody, right? Like you're the bomb and has a bomb on it or whatever. Like you have these like really corny ones, but then I wanted a real one. And I remember one year, I was like, I don't know, fourth, fifth, sixth grade. I got one that said like, dear Tyler. And it began to say all the things they liked about me. And I was, I was reading this thing, I was like, oh, and in my head as I'm reading this, I was like, man, I really hope it's this girl. I really hope it's this girl, I really hope. And then I get to the bottom and it says, from your secret admirer. So I, I didn't know who it was. So I remember going around the class, like looking and, and you call me a creep, whatever. But I was like looking at girls like papers. So I could see like, okay, handwriting, okay, all capital letters, you don't do that. You don't. And I remember like really trying to figure out who my secret admirer was. And then fast forward, I'm a junior in high school in Spanish class. 
and there's a girl that sat two seats away from me. She was a sophomore in Spanish class. Her name was Ryan. And I remember I, I got her number from the guy that sat in between us. I said, hey man, let me get her number. I'm gonna text her or whatever. So I remember it was on Valentine's Day, like 10 years ago was the first time I ever texted my wife, Ryan. But guess what? I said, hey. She said, hey. I said, what are you doing? She says, who is this? And, and I said, well, who is this? She says, Ryan. I said, well, you got to guess who this is. I was the secret admirer again. But can, listen, listen, can I tell you? If our relationship would have stayed, stayed anonymous, your relationships can't grow until you know each other. They can't. If I would have always been secret admirer to my wife, we never would have gotten married. She doesn't know my name. She doesn't know who I am. She doesn't know my interests. She doesn't know me. I think we, our walk with God's no different. And that's why we're in this series called Only Fans. Fans, you know what we love to do? We love to know, but we never, right? We watch the celebrity, we watch the football team, we watch the singer, but they don't know us. We know them. We have, man, I know where they were born, what group they started, what happened in high school. We know everything about them, but they don't know about us. And I think in our... We have this fan mentality when it comes to God. Man, I go to church. I know a couple worship songs. I read once or twice a year. I pray for my food. I know God. But man, I don't want to talk about the things that go on in my heart. I don't want them to know me. I don't want them to know me. So as we're in this OnlyFans series, last week we talked on fans leave when it costs too much. Right? I'll go to dinner with you if you're paying. I'll hang out with you if you're paying for the movie. Oh, I've got to pay, man. I'm going to just stay at home. I'm going to just watch Netflix. Don't worry about it. I don't like you that much. And we saw that, man, maybe there are some things God's going to ask me to pay for that's going to cost me. And I've got to figure out, does my love for God, Will my love for God, will I sell everything? Will I give everything up? You know what else, as I was thinking, what else fans hate? Waiting in line. If you've ever, we just hate waiting, right? You get a ticket to your favorite artist, to a concert, to whatever. And what do you say right when you get it? I can't wait to go see her. I can't wait to go see them. We hate waiting. The Super Bowl just happened. What is it right now? The off season. Football fans hate the off season. We hate waiting. We hate it. But what, what if God wants to use our waiting? What if God has a plan for the off season? Because what, when we get the ticket, we just want to skip through three months to go straight to the concert. There's a lot of time that we can do productive things in the season, but we just want to skip it. We just want to, we just want to move on. And God has, God has these seasons of waiting for a reason to grow us, to use us to challenge us, to mold us. But fans, what do we do? We leave. I'm only here for the blessings, I'm out. I'm only here when you're really showing up, I'm out. But as we move from fan to follower, we've got to ask ourselves, man, am I willing to follow God even when I'm waiting? Even when it's hard and we're, we're we're going back to the Old Testament. We're going to Genesis. And there was a guy early on, his name was Joseph. When I talk about this guy could, it seemed like he could do no wrong. Everything he did, everything he touched, everything he was a part of had God's favor on it. If even Joseph has to go through seasons of waiting, 
The guy that has God's favor, he's dripped. He's got it all. If even he has to wait, doesn't Tyler, doesn't Tyler have to wait? Because I think that there's something. If you have a Bible, turn to Genesis 39. And before I can pull up on this, we've got to figure out why he gets into this situation. Anyways, Joseph, and maybe you grew up and you read some like little Bible stories back in the day. Joseph was loved by his dad. His brothers, ah. So his brothers take him, they throw him in a pit for three days. He sits there until these guys come and they, and they take him. They take him to Egypt. But can I tell you, if, if, if you have God's favor in one season, God doesn't change. So he gets to Egypt and guess what happens? This guy named Potiphar, he starts working for this guy named Potiphar and Potiphar goes, this guy's the real deal. I like this guy. Now he puts Joseph over his whole household. Now Joseph is the manager. This kid from the pit, his favor. God just kept showing up. But how many of us know when God begins to make room for you, the enemy likes to use people to... So Potiphar, the guy who put Joseph where he was, had a wife. Potiphar's wife thought Joseph was cute. So she kept trying to... Hey, Joseph, come sleep with me. Joseph, come sleep with me. Hey, Joseph, come here. And Joseph, any other young guy, hey, listen, I've been 16 before. Joseph, he said, he replies with two things. He said, I would never sin against my master Potiphar, and I would never sin against my God in heaven. Potiphar's wife kind of gets in her feels about this, so Potiphar's wife, I guess she sees him walking around one day and he's wearing this, like this jacket and she goes to grab him. I can't make this up. And if y'all say the, the Bible is boring, pull up Genesis 39. Just pull this up. She goes to grab him, to take him to bed. He gets out of the coat and he begins to run. She's got his coat. And she's probably feeling a little insecure. So her husband comes home, you know what she tells him? That guy Joseph, that man of God Joseph, he tried to rape me. And now we pull up, and if you've ever been lied on before, Genesis 39 verse 19. And this is where we're gonna start. Remember, this is Joseph, this is guy that's walked in the favor of God. This is the guy that is called, that is anointed, that ha he has a hope and a future. And all this is happening to him? Look at this, verse 19. Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held, and there he remained. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. Now look at this, man. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Verse 22. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that had happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Let's go back to the beginning, look at this, verse 19. Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story. The lie, when you begin to step out in God's calling, when God begins to show blessing and favor on your life, that's when the enemy comes in, he's a liar. He's a manipulator. That's what he does. And Potiphar was furious. 
when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph, look at this, the innocent man, he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. And this is where I want to stop. Look, and there Joseph remained. How did Joseph called, anointed, blessed, end up here. There he remained. Joseph's in prison. Joseph's waiting. He knows God's good. And you know what's crazy? You know what it never says that Joseph does through this whole story? Say she was lying. Never one time did Joseph go, oh, hey, no, Potiphar, your wife is tripping right now. Never once. He never tried to convince anybody that he was, he never tried once. And you know what I've seen in our seasons of waiting, in our prison moments, we try to convince, we would rather convince people then change people in our seasons of waiting. Well, no, you don't understand. Here's what happened. Here's why I'm not there. Here's what happened. Here's what's going on. Don't. You don't have to convince anybody. You're called. God loves you. God desires you. God's using you. And you're in a hard season. You're in a waiting season. You don't have to convince anybody. You don't. Easier said than done. Your family's talking about you. Coworkers talking about you. Finances aren't working the way you thought. That business that you wanted to start isn't going the way that you thought. You're in the season. And the easy thing to do is try to convince everybody you've got it. Hey, I'm good. No, no, no. I think Joseph knew that the Lord was fighting this battle for him. Rather than spend your whole time while you're waiting, fighting these people, convincing them, trying to get them on board, you'll want to. Tyler wants to. That's not what your season of waiting's about. That's not why God has you there. God has you in this prison, whoever you are, wherever you are. He has you in the season of waiting. He has you in this prison right now to change people, not convince people. God will reveal everything. Don't worry about it. If you've been lied on, you know. You know. <laughs> Trust me, I've been there. And I've spent, I've spent the better half of my life trying to convince people that God was using me rather than just let God use me. I've been there. I've been there. Joseph never one time Never one time. And you'd think the Bible would include it. Never one time goes, you need to check your wife. No. He went to the prison because the same God, the same God that was in this pit a little while ago, the same God that got him out of the pit will be the same God that gets him out of the prison. And he knew that. You know why he knew that? Look at what happens. So he took Joseph. He threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. And there he remained. But, verse 21, but, and you know anytime it starts with that, you know something's coming. Something's turning. Something's happening. Something's changing. But the Lord was with Joseph where? In the prison. Joseph didn't have to convince anyone because he knew God was walking with them. But so oftentimes we allow our pain to make us forget his presence. We allow the prison we're in. We, we forget. My daughter, Asher, she, she loves to get your phone. She loves to get our phones and like just look at pictures, right? And my wife and I, we've had kids, so we have a six-year-old and a four-year-old, so we're not perfect parents. We've been to the hospital a few times. We've cracked heads. We've busted lips. We've done all that. 
and we'll take pictures in the hospital. So my daughter Asher loves to scroll through pictures and see. And not too long ago, no joke, she looks at me and she's got a picture of her in the hospital and she goes, Dad, do you remember this? I was like, yeah. You know, you busted your mouth. Yeah, I remember it. She said, where were you? I said, Asher, I carried you into the hospital. Where was it? Where were you? In her pain, she can forget that I was ever there. When I was the one that literally carried her into the hospital, she forgot. And in our seasons of waiting, in our seasons of pain, in our seasons of prison, we can forget God was the one that carried you through everything. We forget. And being a fan, peace, God, I'll talk to you when life's good. Nah, man. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison. In the prison. We want God to be with us in the, hey, get me out of this thing. There's no way you could be in here with me. He's in there with you. He's in the prison with you, turning everything together for good to those that would believe in him and are called. Anytime, not only does God show up in the prison, God likes to show out in the prison. Because look, 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 just like whenever you see the word but, you know God's turning something. When you see the word and, he's adding something. And this is what I love. Look at this. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and I'm going to add something. God's not just going to be there, but he's going to add on to something. And showed him his faithful love. Not only was God present, powerful. He was there. He showed him his faithful love. You know, so oftentimes whenever we're in a, we're in a season of waiting, we're in a a prison moment, whatever that is, we can really kind of get into a season where we think we, there's only so much we can do, right? Seasons of waiting. Let me try to get these things on, man. This thing's tripping me out. There we go. When we find ourselves in a prison, when we find ourselves in seasons of waiting, yes, or is there a limited things? There's a limited amount of things that you can do, right? There are certain things you don't. I've been, hear me. I'm not perfect. I was never perfect in the past. I've been locked up. There are certain things you don't have access to. There are certain things you can't do when you have shackles on you, when you're in a season of waiting. But you know what shackles can't keep you from doing? There are some things that these can't keep you from doing. And Joseph got this. You know what these can't keep you from doing? Pray. God, I need you. God, I know you're there. I know you're working something. I know you're doing. They can't keep you from praying. You know what else they can't keep you from doing? God, I'm in your word. I know there are promises in here. I know you called me to do something. I know you're doing something great. Allow for me to trust your word. They can't keep me. You know what else they can't keep you? Your hands. They can still go up. But we get so convinced that in these seasons of waiting, that in these seasons of being in the prison like Joseph, that we look at all the things we can't do, but the very things we can do are the things that will break us through. That's it. You don't need much in your season of waiting. You don't need much in the prison. Really, the only things you can do are the very things that God will use to get you out. And Joseph knew that. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. Remember how we said the word and was an add-on? There's another and coming. 
and showed him his faithful love and Again, the favor that Joseph has, the favor. When you walk in this, God, I know you're with me. I trust you. I'm praying. I'm reading. I'm worshiping. There's an and coming. There's an add-on coming. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Does this not sound familiar to when he got into Potiphar's house the first time? Does this not sound exactly like him going to the pit, getting out, going to Potiphar's house and Potiphar going, that's my favorite? Joseph brought the same favor he had outside the prison. That favor was in the prison. That favor was in the waiting. But so oftentimes we don't access it because we're shackled and we, ah, I don't know. Well, we're fans. We don't read. We're not praying. We, we slow that down. He's saying, pick it up. Because that's where you're. Where there's obedience, there will always be blessing. The Bible is very clear on that. And Joseph, we see. He's locked up. It's not stopping him. But you know what? It, we don't want favor in the prison. I want favor to get out of the prison, not favor to be, stay in the prison. I don't want favor at my workplace now. I want favor at the new job. No, 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 no. That's not how that works. God wants to use you at your workplace now. God wants to use you in your city now, not where you want to go, not what you want to do. We want favor to get out. No, 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 no. It's almost like God gave him favor to keep him in because he had a work to do. And he gave him favor with the warden. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. And look at this, verse 22. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. You know why I don't think we have favor in the seasons that we're in? because we whine in the waiting. What would it look like if Joseph would have been, if you've ever been to a jail, you've ever been to a prison, you've ever talked to somebody that's locked up, nobody's guilty. There's never been a crime committed in prison. Everybody's like, man, I didn't do it. No, that ain't me. Could you imagine if Joseph would have been with these dudes complaining about what happened Do you think he would have been given the leverage and the promotion and the favor to minister to them and be over them? No. He used his waiting to whine. And so oftentimes, wherever you're at, wherever you're waiting, whatever prison you're in, maybe you're using it right now to complain about how you, you're talking about last season. Man, you should have seen me last season. You should have seen what I did back then. Right now, man, don't look at me now. Look back then. No, 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 no. It's almost like Joseph had been using this time. Well, I mean, look at, I think here's why. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. Look at this, verse 23. I think this is why. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. Do you serve when you're waiting? Do you serve? I heard somebody and I can't remember who it was or what it was, he said, man, if I'm gonna I'm be waiting, I'm gonna learn the menu. If you're gonna have me waiting these tables, I'm gonna learn this menu, I'm gonna memorize this thing. Joseph, in his waiting, said, Warden, what do you need? You're not who I want to be talking to, but you're who I'm talking to right now. What do you need? The warden had no worries. Joseph was serving in his waiting. He trusted him. We, hear me, we do everything but serve. We, ask me how I know. We do everything but serve when we're in a season of waiting. Yes, God's called you to do something great. But will you serve someone else's greatness on your path to greatness? 
We don't do it. Ask me how I know. I've been there. Remember, these shackles keep you from a lot. But you still have access to do the things that will get you out of them. I really think God wanted him in this prison. I really think God wanted Joseph in this prison. I do. Some people believe that Joseph was in this prison for like 12 years. Not three days, not a month, not enough to binge a Netflix show and we're done and I forgot it. No, 12 years. Joseph served. Joseph served for 12 years with these on. I think that was the secret behind and if spoiler alert if you read a couple chapters over the life that God gives Joseph we die for the most powerful man in the country prison the warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything and look at this it's almost like God can't stop talking about how much he's in the prison. <laughs> how this chapter ends. The Lord, again, he said this like four times. And we've only read like four verses. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. You can succeed where you are right now. I don't know who you are, what's going on in your marriage, in your finances, at your company, at your job, with your kids. I don't know the shackles you have. God's given you everything you need to succeed. I think the most important part is just God's with you. And wherever God's presence is, you will find favor. You will find blessing. You will find breakthrough. But I think your first thing is be, let me find God's presence. Let me find his presence in the prison. And the very last part, and this is what I love the most about this whole story. Chapter 40, verse one. The first three words, and we're done. So the verse, or chapter 39 ends, the Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Chapter 40, verse one, some time later some time later there was a later for Joseph 12 years 12 months 12 days whatever it is for you there's a later I promise but you've got to figure out Am I really only following God outside of the prison? Or man, am I going down there to serve? Am I going down there to pray? Because I'm telling you, there is a time for you to take these off. I promise, I don't know how to do it, but there's a time. But what you do with these on, it will determine one, probably how long you're in there, but then also because if you read chapter 40, and chapter 40 is a crazy story. It's not perfect right then. Sometime later, God starts sending some other people down to the prison. But what you do when you're waiting, how you seek God's presence in the prison, I mean, that'll determine if you're a fan or a follower, and only you know the answer to that. I don't. And that's my prayer for you. I, that whatever you're waiting on, whoever you are, man, God's called you to do something crazy in this world, whether it's with a business, whether it's in ministry, in your marriage, with your kids, and you just find yourself in a season of waiting. You know God's called you to something. I tell you, you don't have to convince anybody. Don't. What are you doing with what you have? What's your prayer life like in the prison? What's your study like in the prison? What's your worship like in the prison? That's my prayer. That we would...
press into his presence when we're in pain, when we're in the prison, when we're waiting. Because there is blessing on the other side. God, we love you. We're thankful that even though we go into the prison, we go into seasons of waiting, we go into seasons of doubt and that you're there. You're there with us. You're moving us. You're growing us. And we don't have to impress anybody. We don't have to convince anybody. We can just go there knowing that you're with us and you're going to cause everything we do to succeed. God, I'm sorry when I've whined in the waiting. I'm sorry when I've complained, when I've pulled myself out of opportunities that you wanted me to do in the waiting season. God, help me to seize those opportunities. Help me to see every person not as an inconvenience, but as an opportunity. God, we love you. We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful that you're using us, that you're growing us. But help me be okay in the waiting. God, we love you. We thank you. It's in your name we pray and everybody said, amen. Hey, what's up? My name's Tyler and you are a part of our different church YouTube campus. And I just wanna say thank you, I'm the pastor here. And here's a few things that you can do to stay apart, one, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Be alerted anytime something drops or releases. We want you to be a part, we want you to be encouraged and inspired and figure out what your different is. But maybe you wanna tell your auntie, your uncle, your cousin, whoever. Maybe you wanna send that, just share it. Cause what I've learned in ministry, people will open a link to a church long before they ever open the door to a church. And maybe you're on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, follow us, different church. Nashville, be a part, see what we're doing every single day. And maybe last but not least, you're an OG, you're a real one. You really want to get plugged in. All you got to do is go to different.church. That's D-F-R-N-T dot church to find out more about us, the church, uh, how to give, how to be a part, all of that. But I love you and I will see you next video.